Hi everyone, this is Tiffany Hill, um, I'm a 7th grade English and ESL teacher. Um, I was asked to do a professional development um, over any topic um, of my choosing and something that really um, came to mind was supporting the English language learners in all class um, classrooms, not just the English classroom. Um, over the past couple of years, I've had many different first year teachers um, and some seasoned teachers um, come to me and say, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know how to support um, this English language learner. Um, they're not um, native speakers of English. And some of them, uh, you know, we've had a few uh, students come to us that don't speak any English. and um, I just try to encourage them and, and tell them that it doesn't have to be stressful. There are ways that you can um, teach English language learners without wanting to pull your hair out, um, trying to find resources and other things. There are some simple techniques that you can use in the classroom that will not only help your English language learners, but it will also they will also help um, all of your students. Um, so I, I really want you guys to, to think of this as an opportunity um, to help all of your students become better learners. Okay, so uh, supporting English language learners doesn't have to be stressful. I um, want you guys to really think about creating a classroom environment that is welcoming and helpful. Um, one thing that um, I've realized over the past few years and teaching um, some students that have come in from other countries is that they are super nervous about being in this environment. So I want you to think about, you know, any new student and how nervous they are. But imagine a new student that has come from another country and not only is your classroom new, but the entire environment around them is new. So make sure that your classroom is welcoming and helpful and I'm going to give you some some techniques on how to do that. First of all, ELLs feel more comfortable in an environment that is predictable. Don't we all feel more comfortable in an environment that's predictable, but they especially need an environment that when they walk in, they know what to expect. Um, first of all, you can create a daily schedule. Um, I write my daily schedules in both English and Spanish because I have multiple beginner um, students in my classroom. Um, but if you don't have any beginner students in your classroom, maybe just put it in English. Um, but create a daily schedule. In elementary classrooms, it may be listed in picture and word form in order to provide that extra support. Um, Oftentimes you have your be beginner and your in intermediate students that need those pictures as reminders of what certain words mean. Um, for classes in the secondary level, you should keep assignments, homeworks, homework and goals posted daily. Um, this is going to help your student um, be effective in the classroom. Another thing that you could do in um, secondary level, um, since we aren't necessarily in the same classroom all day long, is just give them something like this over here, an opening routine. What do I do when I walk in the classroom? Again, that can be beneficial to any student, but especially beneficial to your ELLs. There are more ways for you to stay consistent. Um, use specific morning routines um, or, like I said, entering the classroom um, for secondary levels. Make those routines the same every day, such as lunch count, turning in homework, putting things away, morning greetings, etc. In my classroom, for example, um, I only had one student from each table get up and take their table's work to the box. So it gave um, routines and jobs to each student in that group. Um, use predictable signals for getting the student's attention, transition, lining up, et cetera. So 
if I want all of my students to stand, stand, I may lift my hands up in a manner to show them I want them to stand. If I want everyone to sit down, I may point to sit down. Um, if you want everyone to line up at the door, point to the table that you want um, to get up and then point to the door. These predictable signals, also universal signals, um, will grasp that student's attention and help your ELLs um, better understand what you're wanting them to do. Gesture, gestures and other um, predictable signals are super, super helpful um, when teaching ELLs your routines. Also, use predictable procedures for passing out materials. Um, for example, I have tables in my classroom, six students at a table, and I have six tables. For passing out materials, I don't just have all of my students come up at once. I pass out four per table, and then the students hand each other that material. I know a lot of this sounds super simple or, um, I guess, a little childish, but these procedures are going to help your ELLs feel comfortable, understand your routines, and also help them understand what to expect in the classroom. On a lot of my um, slides, I have links um, for you to use to get more um, information. And I'll also give you more links at the end of the slide as well. All right, so getting get to know each ELL individually. We as teachers should strive to get to know all of our students and really um, create a bond um, and relationships with those students. However, with our ELLs, their culture and um, personalities and um, way of living may be different for each one. So first of all, Again, they're when they come in, they're normally super nervous. Um, a lot of times there will be a silent period where they don't talk. You may think they're shy. Um, so it's best to ask questions at your desk. Call the ELL individually to your desk or maybe with their interpreter and ask them questions about their life. Where did they come from? What is their favorite food? Um, don't overwhelm them all at once with all of these questions, but, you know, gradually get to know more about your students. Um, next, contact parents. I'm going to give you a way on the next slide to contact parents easily, um, especially parents that don't speak English as well. The next uh, point, do not assume each ELL is on the same level, okay? We have beginner, we have intermediate, we have advanced, we have advanced high. Don't assume that um, just because an ELL is advanced high on reading that they're also advanced high on speaking. So make sure that you check that. If you don't know their level of reading, writing, listening, and speaking, you can find this information in Edgephoria. I don't have time to go over um, Edgephoria and where to find that, but please reach out to your, um, your ELL coordinator. Um, and or your your partner teacher and find out more information about Edgephoria and where to find that. It's super important to understand the level that your students are on. Um, while they may be beginner on reading, um, they could be a little a better, um, maybe intermediate on listening. While they may be beginner on speaking, they may be better at reading or writing. So again, you can find this information on Edgephoria. Please, please, when you get the list of ELLs, I cannot stress enough that you need to go through and, and write that down and get it together. It's super important. Um, you have to, again, uh, follow the law and um, provide them with um, their supports specific to that English language learner. Um, the next thing, learn about your students' cultures, which without assuming they all represent the same culture. So let me give you an example of how this would work. So I had 
three different students from three different countries that all spoke Spanish this year. Um, well, from two different countries that all spoke Spanish this year. One student was from El Salvador. Two students were from Mexico. All three students were beginner in their level of speaking. However, the culture in El Salvador is going to be different than the culture in Mexico, as well as the culture in northern Mexico may be different than the culture in southern Mexico or central Mexico. So make sure that you learn about their cultures individually. And once you do that, apply those cultures in your teaching um, to make it more comfortable for those students. Um, the next point, allow students who are familiar with the same home language to help the student become familiar with topics, routines, and other beneficial information in your classroom. So in my classroom, I would always pair my student um, who was a beginner in reading, writing, listening, and speaking with a more advanced or advanced high Spanish um, speaker or home language uh, with a student with their home language in order to help that student, number one, be more comfortable, number two, be able to participate more effectively, and number three, become familiar with what um, certain words are and what my routine is in the classroom. Um, that's super important. If you don't have a, a student that can translate for you or help you out, again, reach out to your ELL um, coordinator, reach out, um, reach out, or your ESL coordinator, I'm sorry, um, or your um, telepass coordinator, um, and, and try to get some help in that area. Okay, so one of my points earlier in uh, my slideshow was um, reaching out to parents. Something that was a communication lifesaver for me this year, especially during COVID-19 um, and virtual learning, was the topic Talking Points app. I used the app a little bit um, in it throughout the year just to reach out to parents um let them know where te when tests were happening and so forth but during this virtual learning period it was so helpful um in order to be able to reach out and let the parents know what the expectations were what the assignments were whether or not their child hadn't turned in their um assignment so how this works, it works like Remind with multiple languages. You can choose. If you have a child that speaks Mandarin or you have a child that speaks Spanish or maybe you have a child that speaks uh, Hindi, um, you're going to put in what that child speaks or what that child's parent speaks and you will be able to text them in English and it translates to them automatically in their language. Um, this makes parents feel more comfortable, it opens doors for better communication, and it allows each parent to, to also choose their language. Um, you send out an information sheet at the beginning um, of the year, and the, the parents get to tell you what their um, chosen language is, their phone number, how they want to, want to be reached. Um, that is at talkingpoints.org. Uh, after this, this slide is over, I'm going to um, share it with you guys for whoever's in the professional development session. Um, when you look through the slideshow again, you can click on this Talking Points introduction video to get more information. All right, so the next point. Um, you can incorporate ideas and concepts from their culture into your lessons. So once you speak with the parents, once you speak to the students, you learn more about their culture, it would be a great idea to help those students by incorporating those concepts into your lessons, your daily lessons. 
Um, for example, NewsELA.com has resources for science, social studies, and English written in Spanish. So let's say you have an English language learner that is a beginner. You can um, apply for science, social studies, and English. You can take whatever article you were going to use from NewsELA, and they have it, some of them, sorry, in Spanish. Um, another way to help those students in your classroom is to use multilingual videos, subtitles, translations, images, and universal gestures to help beginner and intermediate ELLs. Um, for example, I would create all of my bell ringers um, in English and Spanish. Um, Google Translate is super, super helpful. I will say, however, make sure that you get a native speaker to um, proofread that so it doesn't sound um, silly. Um, the next thing, use popular stories, folk tales, bilingual books, topics, characters, and images from their culture. For example, um, I heard one of my students say that in science, during their lessons, they use native plants from their country to help them um, understand the concepts a little bit better. So if you're teaching a um, lesson over plants, maybe use um, an agave plant or something that they're going to be familiar with if you have a Spanish um, speaker from Mexico in your class. Social studies, incorporate research opportunities that allow culturally diverse topics. Um, I know in Texas history, there's a lot of opportunities for you to use um, research from Mexico and other places in Southern and Central America. Um, in math, use images from their culture for counting, explaining, etc. Again, that can be any image that um, they've talked about or you've researched. Last but not least, have fun. See this as an opportunity. Um, and that's what I really tell all of my first year teachers and teachers that come to me and talk about. Um, their anxiety, right? I just say, have fun. See it as an opportunity. Number one, for growth. Okay, we all can grow and experience um, different parts of the world this way, right? So um, not only growth for yourself, but growth for your students. That's a good way for your students who have never been out of your town um, to really experience something new. Um, for love. love every student as an individual and know that every student brings something new to the table. Um, and also grow to love their culture, grow to love something, right? Pick something and just really see it as a great opportunity to, to show love to that student and their culture. Um, again, for new experiences, who knows what they can bring to the table. I know that um, for the junior high, we've had uh, social studies classes where they get to bring in cultural food. Um, and I've done it as well in my English class, um, where they get to bring these experiences and, and um Anyway, they they can bring these experiences into into your classroom and, and give new experiences to students who wouldn't have otherwise had those experiences. Also, see it as an opportunity for teaching, teaching other students how to accept cultural diversity, um, how to teach those students um, the English uh, language and also American culture. Um, really just reaching out and seeing it as an opportunity to do what we signed up for. I would also see it as an opportunity for collaboration, Co collaboration within your department, collaboration within the school district, collaboration within the community, really open those doors um, for collaboration with parents and, um, and other people in the community. Uh, 
these are some great resources to help you. Uh, these are resources that I've used in the past, resources that I've I used for um, the slideshow. All right, so in order to get credit for this professional development, um, I, I need you guys to participate in this Padlet. You must participate in the Padlet that I will attach to this after the video. You must create a post on the Padlet with three examples of how you can support ELLs in the classroom. So I'll put the link to the Padlet, you click on it, and then you create a post on that um, Padlet link um, with three different ways or three different examples of how you can and will support ELLs in your classroom next year. Um, in, order, in order to prevent users from outside uh, Wills Point ISD from accessing our, our Padlet, I will post the link after this video.